Hi, it's Chris from Web Motorworks, and we're at Canadian Electric Vehicles. This is Todd, and he's helped me out with the wiring on the electric small block Chevy. So we're going to have a look at a few different things here, the batteries, the controls, and um, all that kind of technical stuff that I don't know a lot about. And he's a big smarty, so he'll, he'll explain it to us. Okay, so here we're in the cab of the truck. We've got the seat going on top of here, and uh, Todd and his boys have done quite a bit of work in here. Um, We've got the, uh, this is battery management system. This is a charging system. Uh, what's this thing, Todd? Uh, those are leftovers from the past. What do you I mean? mean? I think that's your uh, oh. flamethrower. Your flame oh yeah, my flamethrower. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, this is right. Okay, and we have that big switch over there. Yeah, you can't have a flamethrower with an electric uh, motor. We need, a, we need a spark thrower. Yeah, we need a separate gas tank, and yeah, so we won't bother with a flamethrower. So the cool thing here is this big red knob here, and that ties into these breakers down here. So if all of a sudden you see smoke flying up or you get in an accident or something, you pull on this big red knob, and that pulls these breakers, and then you have to manually reset them. So. This is kind of old technology, is it, Todd? Like, yeah, that's an old school disconnect system. Right. Yeah, it suits this project very well. Oh, for it's sure. a nice way to do the um, the dual motor setup. Yeah. Um, but we do have newer versions of the disconnects that are much more compact. Uh, if you don't need the remote cable apparatus, right? It'd be like just an inertia yeah, switch that you just turn. Just a knob. Yeah. yeah. And then under here, speaking of shutoffs, if you uh, this little thing here, uh, they explained that to me. If you got in an accident. Uh, it would shut down things like say it slammed into some old lady right. in front of you. So the It'll secret, shut off the power, yeah. yeah. So if you slammed into her and it's your fault, you get to take off real quick. Push this button, we'll reset yep. it, and then you can then drive you can away. Go. And these are your contactors. Yeah, those are the discharge contactors. Yeah, like a solenoid, I guess. Yep. High voltage coming in, and then goes to the battery pack. It comes or, from the battery pack okay, yep. to those, yep. then to the disconnects. Oh, to these, yeah, and then the, out big, to the motor, the big red knob, and then to the motor, right? And then we've got another set inside the motor, also. Yeah, those are uh, those ones are operated by the motor controllers. Oh, these okay. ones are operated by the battery management system. This stuff here, this is part of my wiring that uh, originally when I wired the trucks for all my lights and all that. So that's got nothing to do with the uh, electric truck itself, and. Yeah, a few little switches and stuff like this. So what we're thinking is, when we get into production building these, I don't want you guys to have to build all this crap. So what I want is Todd to be able to somehow put this in a box, Todd, or something. With, yeah. Uh, Normally in a, in these conversions, uh, most of this stuff, the contactors, everything would all be installed into a bigger version of those plastic boxes. Like that boxes. gray box, right? Yeah, to protect it from you know, from, from weather or from tampering, that kind of stuff. Yeah. In yeah. this case, we're, we were really crammed for space. We yeah. didn't have a lot of options. Yeah. And a whole bunch of those plastic boxes mounted where you could see them outside the truck um, wouldn't, wouldn't really be the rat rod Not look. Not very rat rod. So I agree. this I like looks, this. this looks a little science projecty. It's, oh. you know, way more than we normally do, yep. but, yep. but it, it does suit this kind of a project oh, for and, sure. uh, yeah, everything's visible. Yeah. No, oh, exactly. Yeah. And, uh, so if we went with the high voltage, which I want to maybe go high voltage in the future, or maybe within a couple months, uh, to get higher horsepower, um, these, you would eliminate this type you'd have more of a different connector would you or something yeah okay. for a high voltage system we would we would be looking at uh, integrating a lot of that stuff inside the steel case of the battery module okay so yeah. that way it's uh, it's more self-contained um, if the battery management system um, shuts power down, there's no live power outside of the battery module. Right. Um, right. And it also leads to a more pl plug and play approach where we wouldn't necessarily have to have cables with bolt terminals. Yeah. We'd be able to use uh, push to connect high voltage connectors. Yeah, because all these old farts, we don't want them farting around having to. Am I allowed to say that fart? Absolutely. Oh, right. So all these old farts, they don't want to have to fart around with all this cabling and stuff. They want to be able to just. Pop the motor in, plug it in. I mean, they're going to have to do a little bit of stuff, but yeah, route you know, some cables, and they will yeah. have to crimp some ends. So yeah, these cables I, have to be made the right length. And we could make a kit with give them a pile of wire and say, "Hey, do it yourself." But you know, for let them save a hundred bucks or well, ten thousand dollars, whatever it is, <laughs> I don't know what. But I think generally most people would want to kind of have a plug and play. I think, yeah. which makes sense. And then the other thing too is um, Sam was doing a bunch of. Uh, 
computer stuff, uh, what do you call it, programming and that? Yeah, yeah, so he was plugged into the battery management system. Okay, yeah. There's a software tool to configure the parameters, um, yeah. and he was also watching all of the individual cell voltages on that same piece of software through the battery management okay. system. So would the old fart have to do that, or could we no, set that, that up? No, that could be pre-configured. Okay, so it would be. You know, so it's going to be old fart proof, or whatever you want to call it. We'll, we'll coin a phase for that. <laughs> and then uh, over here we've got, um, these are the, uh, well, what are these again? Um, well, the two uh, on the lower row there are uh, gauges that indicate what the motors are doing. Okay. So by pushing those red buttons, you can, can cycle one? through. Sure, then it's not turned on. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, yeah, you can cycle through um, you know, motor motor RPM, controller temperature, motor temperature, oh, really? different things All like on that. These. Yeah, well, that's cool yeah. for each motor because we do have dual motors in here, and and then this thing up here. That's um, that's your fuel gauge. So it's uh, monitoring the battery uh, state of charge so that okay. you know when you've gone past the halfway mark and it's time to turn around and go home. Oh, okay. And if we wanted to make this look like a Tesla, could we put like a big screen on here instead of we that? We could. We have those options. Oh, do you? It wouldn't look very good wouldn't in this suit truck. This truck but, no. but so maybe for our higher voltage, we'd want to do a bit of a more modern screen. Yeah, like, we can look at options yeah, like that. Yeah, like for, for sure. a Camaro or something. Yeah. The Camaro's not going to want these. They're going to, yeah. and like I say, for the rat rod, the big knob, and everybody likes the big red knob there, but uh, and a Camaro will mm -hmm. go with that little nice switch and maybe a... Yeah, we've even looked at ones that have navigation, have uh, satellite oh, really? radio, all that oh, kind of stuff okay. in them too. Yeah, right on. Yeah, the simpler the better sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. And and I mean you can we we can do it uh, a different ratio. The very wealthy guys can have the fancy stuff, and the poor guys can have this stuff or whatever. It all depends. There's probably the not much difference in price anyway. So is there? If uh, well, the screens do can cost quite a bit more. Oh yeah. Yeah, they're. They're uh, they're uh, they're additional cost. And could you do something on an iP or your iPhone maybe or not really? Um, there I have why seen. Would, why would you? Why I would guess. you? Is yeah, this you a real issue. Yeah. I have seen systems like that, but I don't under, I don't really see how that would work well for uh, you know for a nicely fitted conversion. Yeah, right. Yeah, right on. Okay, cool. I think we've kind of covered everything here. Um, the inside stuff. Yeah, we'll go have a look at the engine and see what's happening up there. Sure. So what we got here is we've got the fan and they've set that up on a control inside that uh, monitors the temperature of the motor and we also have um, a little water pump that runs water through the controller so that's all set with the computer and set up with that. This here we've got the dual controllers inside there and this is what you were talking about Todd the other uh, contact. Yeah, the other contact the other that's controlled contactor. by the motor controller. Yeah right on. And then these wires here go into the dash and we've got wires coming up through. These are the high voltage wires going back to the battery, going through here where your spark plug plugs would be. And uh, yeah, anything else to add to that, Todd? Uh, no, no, yeah. it's, um, we're just about to get a look at, uh, at how the air cleaner setup uh, looks. Yeah. It's uh, like, as you said, it's really just cosmetic but it should give us a nice finishing touch normally you'd have a carburetor here and you know what we could do is um, we could rip this manifold off put your carburetor manifold on it and then move this fan underneath and you know if you wanted it more stock looking but I was trying to get um, you know a look that was kind of a little electric and a little bit rock and roll or not rock and roll gas oh that's a, a little nice bit new a little bit old yeah, yeah. Yeah, Need right. Trim on some bolts. Okay. Oh yeah, they're sticking up a little high, but yeah, good job. That looks great. Yeah, it's going oh, look really and, good. And then so we've got right here. This was originally set up for a flathead, so we've just capped off one, and we've just run the water line through here, and then water line down to the bottom of the radiator. And right here we've got a instead of a water pump, we've got this water bypass. It's a little bit of a cleaner look. Um, and then we just got to put the pulley on for the alternator. You don't really have to have an alternator in this type of vehicle, but I wanted uh, just to be able to hook up your existing alternator to it and it looks stock, but you could technically just pull your voltage from your 96 volts. It's not really efficient what we're doing, but it looks cool. You could so. use the accessory drive for an air conditioning pump as well. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah. And also the other thing, speaking of air conditioning pumps, um, uh, the brakes. So this originally had 
um, assisted brakes from the vacuum of the motor, but we don't have vacuum, so we've actually ordered it. It's, uh, it's not quite here yet, but it's a vacuum pump. Is it electric, is it? Yeah, a little electric powered vacuum pump. Yeah, yeah. And, that's, and that's in lieu of um, vacuum from the motor. But we can use the brakes, they're just not gonna be very good, so we may actually slam into that old lady <laughs> because the brakes really are... A little marginal. A little marginal, no vacuum <laughs> yet. But, but we'll get ah, that done. Who cares? You should, you know, we got a horn, don't we? The horns still work? I never checked. Oh, okay. Well, it used to work. <laughs> okay, so Sam and Scott are balancing these batteries. Um, he's the computer geek. He knows all that stuff. I don't know anything about that. Essentially, what do you guys have to do here to balance the batteries? Well, usually when you get a whole bunch of cells, they're not the same charge level as each other. Okay, so, so these use... are three, sorry to interrupt, these are 3.2 volts? Yeah, so that's some would be three voltage. and some would be 3.2 or something? Yeah, something okay. like that. Yeah. And it becomes a lot more apparent when you bring them up closer to fully charged. Okay. Because uh, right out of the box, it looks like they're all the same, but right. once you charge them up a little bit, they start to drift apart. You okay. see what they're really at. Yeah. And uh, the battery management system can handle all that, but to speed things up, you can do it manually. Oh, okay. So you're going to drain them down all to say three three volts or something like that? Um, or within a few millivolts of each other. Yeah. Ooh, millivolts. He's a smarty <laughs> too. And what were you, you, you were using some type of a thing to... A large resistor. A large oh. resistor. So this here, he hooks on the batteries and then he kind of decharges the batteries with this large resistor here. Yeah, I've heard you could use a light bulb. Like if it was I, if I was going to do it at home, I'd use a light bulb, but these guys are fancy yeah, folks. Yeah, lamp. So yeah, lamp or something. Okay, so we've got 30 3.2 volt batteries that are in series here. It gives us 96 volts, and I think it's 19.2 uh, kilowatt hours, right? Yeah, that's right. right. So I cheaped out on the batteries. I was trying to save some money, and ideally I probably should have used bigger amp batteries or maybe double the amount of these batteries. And why is that exactly, Todd? Uh, well, your capacity is basically like the size of your gas tank. That's oh. going to determine your range, how far you can go. Okay. Um, yeah. So these, this battery pack is a little bit small for uh, you know for an application where you're trying to to travel longer distance, but right. it's um, it's plenty for this for this application for you to get to the coffee shop and back. And yeah, for, uh, there's lots of cheapskates out there like me who. Yeah, you only want to buy as much battery as, as you need for what you want to yeah. do. Now the other problem is, and I remember we talked on the phone, is you were saying I'm limited to how big a burnout I could do because of the capacity of these batteries. Is that correct? Like it can't draw as many amps or something? Yeah. Or? Um, with the dual motors, you know, you have the potential of drawing uh, up to 1,300 amps. Okay. Um, the maximum these batteries are really rated for is 600. Oh, okay. um, so they are a little bit on the small side for yeah, for that application, um, but for short periods of time they're capable of doing it. Um, but it would, you know, operating that that way would essentially cut into their lifespan. But if I had double the amount of batteries, then I've also all of a sudden got twelve hundred amps. That's right. Then you'd, have, then you'd have the capacity of the pack matched to your motor. Side. Yeah. Okay. So moral of the story is don't be cheap. Open your purse <laughs> strings and spend the money. Right, but yeah, you know, but it's expensive. It is, and the other thing we uh, we also discussed these are lithium ion batteries. Um, we had discussed uh, lead acid, which would have been we used a ratio. I think it was four to one, right? Four times the weight, one quarter the cost. Right. So we were maybe four hundred and fifty pounds. I would have two thousand pounds of batteries. Right. Much much shorter life. Oh yeah, that's the other thing too, right? Much shorter. The, yeah. So these. Uh, these you can get 3,000 charges out of or something? Yeah, something? about that. And sure. 300 on a lead acid? Like from dead to... Yeah, yeah depending on the depth of discharge. Yeah. yeah. And then the other thing too is these ones you can discharge, I believe, to 80%. Yes. And with lead acid, it's only 50%. 50, yeah, 50%. Much more than that is shortening the lifespan again. Yeah. And so... Who's going to go lead acid unless it's something like, well, I mean, uh, your little truck there, your lead acid, but that's a Some of them, yeah. But we yeah, do a lot of lithium uh, setups in those trucks now, too. Oh, do you? Okay. Yeah, right on. Cool. Well, let's look at a few other things here. Okay, so this is my six shooter. I always wanted a gun. What's this for? This is for power to charge the batteries, yeah, right? Yeah, that's Obviously. your charging station. Just, I knew what it was. Okay. <laughs> so can I take this home with me? Because i got to charge something. you got to charge it up. And so it goes over to this box over here. 
but I've got I've got a welding cable in my uh, in my shop. Could I just hook my welding cable to that, Todd? Somehow, like put a plug on there or something? Yeah, you can have a plug on the end of that black box and plug okay. it into your welder outlet. Perfect, because I don't feel like running fancy cables and what. Well, just like plugging into here, right? Yeah. Little, it would, it works yeah. Just okay, like that. that'll work good. Yeah, perfect. I like that. That looks cool. Okay. It always works better to turn it up.